In this video we're going to explain how to translate the while loop statement in a high-level programming language to AVR assembly code. Most important ingredient is first to know how do I write a while statement and what does it mean. The while statement is written as follows, the keyword while and then in parentheses we need to write a boolean expression This Boolean expression can only have two possible results, either true or false. And for this example, we're going to assume that false is encoded as a zero and true is encoded as anything different from zero. After this Boolean expression in parentheses, what we can include is with curly brace, what we typically know as the body of the loop and we finish the curly brace. And the interpretation of this construction is that this curly brace is surrounding a chunk of code that is going to be executed repeatedly until this boolean expression is no longer true. So the program will first read the boolean expression, evaluate its uh, value, and if it is true, it will execute the body and go back to evaluate the expression. Now in assembly code, this is going to translate generically as follows. First, we're going to assume that we have some previous instructions. We are going to define a first label, which we call eval. And this eval is going to point to the set of instructions, which could be arbitrarily complex, to evaluate the Boolean expression. The Boolean expression is specified here. And again, this could be arbitrarily complex and arbitrarily long. Let's assume also for the sake of this example that the result of the evaluation of that expression has been stored in R18, register 18. So what we do next is compare register 18 with the immediate value 0 with instruction CPI. And what we do now is a conditional branch. We're going to branch if these two registers are equal it means that this boolean expression has evaluated to false, therefore we need to branch if they are equal to another label which we are going to place at the bottom of this construction which we call done. Immediately afterwards this instruction, if this branch is not taken, it means that this expression evaluated to true, therefore we need to insert here in the middle whatever code is necessary to translate the body of the, of the loop. And finally, as we said before, as soon as this body has been executed, what the loop has to do is go back to the evaluation and repeat the evaluation of the expression. So this is an unconditional jump that is going to bring us back to eval. And immediately after this instruction we can put the label done, which is the destination of this jump. Now, depending on the, the way we want to organize our code, this is one possible implementation of the while loop, there is another one with equally the same functionality which starts by first placing the body of the loop or the instructions that implement the body followed by the eval label and the instructions to evaluate the boolean expression and then again we compare CPI R18 0 but in this case the conditional branch is going to jump if these two are different. If these two are different it means the program has to go back and execute the body therefore the conditional branch is going to be BRNE and it's going to go to the label body and if we want for the sake of similarity, we can write the label done here. There is one little tiny detail though. If we imagine an assembly program executing, one thing that is incorrect is when we reach this point, we shouldn't execute the body. We should in fact execute first the, instruction evaluate, the instructions to evaluate the Boolean expression and then go back to the body. But this is very easy to fix with an unconditional jump here to eval. Now with this instruction here, we replicate exactly the same behavior as we said here. This would be option number two. We jump to the evaluation and if the evaluation is true, 
it means, different from zero, it means this branch will take us back to the body. So we execute the body and we execute again the instruction to evaluate the Boolean expression. Um, construction number two has the advantage that if we implement instead of a while statement a do while statement, the do while statement is exactly with the same structure except we remove the unconditional, unconditional branch at the beginning. Let's now see an example. Let's suppose we have to translate the following loop with a little bit more complex conditions. While x is different from 3 and x less than y, we have here some code, let's say body, and we close the curly brace. So what would be the sequence of instructions to translate this loop structure into assembly code? And again we're going to assume that x and y are a-bit integers and they are stored in memory in a location with a label exactly with the same name. So the first thing we should do is to start evaluating this sub-expression here. So we would do LDS, bring from memory, store in R18 the value of x. Next thing we need to compare, we need to evaluate this sub-expression first, so we need to compare with the constant 3. So it would be CPI R18 3. Now the interesting observation, since this is a conjunction, if this first sub-expression is false, we can conclude that we should jump out of the loop already. This sub-expression being false is equivalent to say branch if they are equal to the place where we are done. So this conditional branch means if this value of x is equal to 3, this is false, get out of the loop. Otherwise, if this branch is not taken, what we need to do is proceed to evaluate this sub-expression. Now for this sub-expression we need to bring from memory the variable y, which we do with another LDS instruction. Let's put it for example in R19, y, and now we proceed to compare R18, which has x, with R19, which has y, and in here the reasoning is similar. If this sub-expression is false, then we should get out of the loop and jump towards the end. The same thing we did here. In this case, this expression being false, it means we need to branch if LT sorry, if greater or equal if x is greater or equal than y, which is the opposite that we're doing here, then we jump to done. So this conditional branch will occur when x is greater or equal to y, which is precisely what makes this expression false. If this branch is not taken, it means that both sub-expressions are true, the conjunctions makes them true, and therefore now we insert here the body of the loop. And finally, as soon as we are done evaluating the body, as we mentioned before, we need to go back and keep evaluating the expression, so we put jump to the label eval, which we are going to place at the beginning of these instructions, and the only thing missing is to stick the label done, which is the destination of these two jumps in case any of these conditions is false. This sequence of instruction then implements the behavior for this while loop in the AVR architecture.